My name's Mark, a certified mold inspector with Breathe Easy Eco Solutions. And today we're going to talk about HRVs, what they are, how to use them, but most importantly, how not to use them to prevent mold growth in your home. So what is an HRV? An HRV is a means to bring fresh air into your home and to allow your house to breathe. Now, of course, older homes, uh, when you ran your wood-burning stove or your furnace or even turned on your exhaust ventilation fans, uh, the replacement air would come in through those drafty windows and doors. Now, of course, when we uh, make our homes more efficient heat-wise, uh, what happens is we take those old drafty windows and doors and we replace them with PVC windows. Maybe we've started to use spray foam in some of our, of our renovations, uh, and we've maybe changed our furnace to a high-efficiency furnace. All those things can make our home more airtight. Now here in Manitoba in 2011, uh, it is code for new home builds to have an HRV. Now how does an HRV work? Well, an HRV draws in air from the outside, allowing your house to breathe. In the colder months, the cold, dry air comes in and it's warmed by the outgoing, stale, warmer air without mixing through a special core. This is the heat recovery portion of the HRV. Now in the winter time, of course, it's cold, it's dry outside, uh, and that is beneficial for reducing the humidity in our home. Although in the summertime, it can be quite hot and humid. So you wanna make sure that you're operating your humidistat, meaning that dial or the little touch button, uh, to set your humidity level. You wanna run that during the winter months only, and of course during the summer months when it's warmer and more humid out, you wanna shut that off. Uh, you still wanna use your bathroom exhaust ventilation fans, because of course year round, it is obviously more humid in your bathroom uh, than it is outside while you're bathing. Now a common mistake I see with the use of HRVs uh, are people just not knowing how to operate them. Uh, they look at it and they say, I don't understand it, so I'm just going to leave it where it is. Uh, and this is a big problem because what happens is if you set your relative humidity to 40%, let's say, and during the summer it is 60% hot and humid outside, your humidistat is going to try to lower the humidity in your home by drawing that hot, humid air from the outside into your home. If you're running air conditioning, of course, it's cooler in your home, so that 60-70% humidity outside is going to come in and it's going to increase the humidity in your home because colder air can't hold as much moisture as warmer air can. I've seen this quite often in new home builds, especially in rental properties where people just don't understand how it works. Uh, and I go in and the HRV has actually caused the mold growth throughout the house because of the elevated humidity levels. Now with that being said, what are the proper humidity levels in your home? So you wanna to try to keep your humidity level below 50%. So I usually recommend 45% during the warmer months uh, and then drop it down to about 30, 35% during the uh, colder winter months. Now some humidistats like the one I have actually has temperatures listed on it instead of humidity levels. So what I've done in this case is I've taken a digital humidity gauge. I just bought one at the hardware store for 15, $18, uh, and I put a pin in the wall and I hung that uh, right around my HRV controller, my humidistat, uh, and my thermostat. And that just gives me a clear indication as to what the humidity level is in your home. If you don't know what the humidity is in your home, I would recommend that you purchase one of these units just so that you're aware uh, of what the humidity is and how you can adjust it. Of course, a good way to look for humidity or excess humidity in your home during the cold winter months is checking out those windows. 
Now it's fine if you have some condensation or a little bit of frost on the base of those windows, but what you wanna watch for is the sweating, so the dripping of moisture. You never want standing water in your home. So if you have uh, a window that has, uh, is just continuously dripping and leaking and you've got standing water, maybe that water is flowing off of the window uh, down the wall, you might see some water staining on that trim of your window. That is a clear indication that your humidity is likely too high. Uh, so you wanna lower that humidity and you wanna increase your air movement. Now, with forced air furnace, for example, uh, if you go around the main floor of your home, you will see that the supply or the heating vents are underneath your windows. Now the reason for that is to provide air movement across your window to encourage evaporation. Uh, so you wanna make sure those vents are clear. You wanna make sure your furniture is away from the exterior wall and that there's good air movement in those areas. So one misconception that people often tell me is they think that their HRV is a dehumidifier. Well, in the wintertime, it does act as a dehumidifier by bringing in that cold, dry air and exhausting out the more humid, stale air. But in no way is it an actual dehumidifier. So during the warmer months, while that humidistat is shut off and your HRV is not running, uh, it's a good idea to have a dehumidifier. Now, quite often that cool air, especially if you have air conditioning, uh, can settle down in the basement and just remain there. Now, colder air can't hold as much moisture as warmer air. So, of course, you can get elevated humidity in your basement. One thing I've noticed is a lot of homes uh, don't have return ventilation in the basement. And if they do, it might be on the ceiling. Uh, some people have just cut out vents and installed uh, in those locations. Uh, you don't want them up higher. Now, warmer air rises and cooler air descends. Uh, so we know this, so what we wanna do is we wanna actually use a wall cavity to bring our ducting in, our return, our cold air return. Uh, use that wall cavity as a means to draw the air up through it and have a vent down at floor level in the basement. Now running your furnace fan in the on position as opposed to running it in auto position will continuously move that air. Even when the furnace isn't calling for air conditioning or heat, you're still gonna get that mixing of air down in the basement uh, and drawing it up into the upper levels. All right, so here I am down in the basement. I'm in my utility room and this here is my HRV unit. So we're gonna open this up. Uh, sometimes there's clips on the bottom and of course sometimes there's clips on the top. Uh, so have a look at your unit. Uh, you uh, should find the clips there. If they are on the bottom, uh, what I've found easy to do is when you unclip it, open it, it might be a little sticky, but it will open up. On the top of the unit, there are actual hinges that lock into place by sliding in sideways. So take a look at it and find out where the movable hinge is uh, and then give it a little bit of a tap on the side. And as you can see here, uh, these just lock into the top. Uh, so you can take this off and you can set it aside. Now, when we take a look at our HRV, we're gonna notice that there is the core here. And in most cases, you'll find all the directions you need to maintain your unit right here on the core. Uh, you'll have two filters. Uh, so here we have a filter. And then of course, over here, we have a filter as well. So what happens is you can see here with these insulated pipes on this side, this is the incoming and outgoing air. On this side, there are uninsulated pipes, and these are the ones that come in from your home or from the exhaust vents in your home uh, and go out to your furnace system. Uh, so about every one to three months, depending on where you live, sometimes in newer home developments, can be really dusty with all that construction going on. So you wanna check these filters uh, a little more often than not. 
uh, just to make sure that they are clear, they are clean, uh, more so it's the outside air that seems to get clogged up quite a bit more. Uh, so again, looking at these directions here, uh, they say every three months you should check your filters. Uh, I usually do it every time I change my furnace filter. I'll open this up, have a quick look at it. Uh, these are washable filters. You can see this one here is a little bit dusty, so it's probably time for me to clean that one. Uh, and what I can do is I can just vacuum this filter, uh, and then if it is particularly dirty, I can actually wash it and then air dry it. Uh, reinstall it as listed with the arrows. Usually there'll be some arrows uh, on this showing you how to install that. Uh, same goes for the one on this side, the exact same filter. Uh, this one here has a little bit of pollen on it from the fall. Uh, so I'm going to go through and I am going to vacuum that out and then give it a wash as well. Now what these filters do, just like the furnace filter, it protects the equipment inside the furnace or the HRV. So this material here uh, was stopped from getting into our core. Now the way the core works is, think of it as those yard sale signs, those corrugated yard sale signs that you can buy. Uh, and if you picture that, they have the air gaps that go through the one way, usually top down. So picture that uh, cut out into a triangle or a diamond, uh, and they are alternating back and forth. So every even one, for example, has the air gaps that go through one way and every odd one has the air gaps that go through the other way. Now this is important for not having the air to mix together. Of course you don't want to just bring in dry air and mix it with the stale air. Uh, so what happens is that warmer air as it leaves the house it's actually leaving through the core sandwiched between two of the other cores which are going or coming into the house. So if we take this out, sometimes they can be a little bit sticky. Uh, I have talked to some people and they've said, well, I've never pulled it out before. Uh, so it can get quite sticky. So looking at this, we can see those corrugated, every even or odd one, however you look at it. Uh, and then on the other side, you also have uh, the core. It's a little tough to see through the core. Uh, you just have to kind of get the, the right light there. You can see a little bit going through that way. Uh, so what you want to do is, again, on this core, you want to clean it out. Uh, different um, manufacturers suggest different time frames. Uh, so it's either annually or biannually, twice a year, every six months. Uh, and again, it all depends on the area you're living and how much dust and debris is in your filters. You can probably get away with doing it once a year. Now when reinstalling this, you want to make sure you line up the bottom, put that in, and the sides. It can be a little bit tricky to go back in, but once you have all of the points lined up on the top, sides, and bottom, uh, it should slide right in. Uh, now what you want to do with this is, uh, I usually do it on a warmer summer day. Take it and get a, a larger tote of some sort, something that will house this, that you can fill with warm, mild soap and water, and you can soak it in there. Uh, you want to put it in, soak it for a couple hours anyway, when you're done, you pull it out, rinse it off with some fresh water, and I usually let it air dry out in the sun for the afternoon. Now while this core is soaking, uh, what you want to do is you want to get into your cabinet here and just use regular soap and water. You might want to vacuum out any larger debris if there's anything in there, uh, but wipe it out with soap and water. Uh, once all that's done, it will dry, the core will be all ready and dry after a few hours, and you can slide everything back in. Uh, so that's the uh, proper maintenance uh, of this unit. 
If you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comment section. We love to hear from you and answer any questions you may have. Until then, breathe healthy, breathe easy.